Welcome to another episode of Week in Review from Citizen Citadel. This week we'll be looking at the 3.2 Evo Carti release, the new Drake ship, and the ships and weapons of 3.2. So with that said, let's get started. Welcome back. So at number 7, we have the 3.2 Evocati release. As predicted last week, 3.2 made its way to the Evocati this week, though very little is known about the build. Mining has been confirmed to be in the build, but there's been very little in terms of leaks from the Evocati group. I'll keep you guys updated as we learn more, and you can check out the Reddit and Spectrum threads to see what's going on. At number 6, we have the new Drake ship. Little is known about the new ship that has been teased on ATV, other than the fact that it's releasing very soon and is coming from Drake Interplanetary. The community is enjoying putting the spoilers together to try and figure out what it is, but they've had limited success so far. We don't know much right now, but I'm sure CIG will continue to spoil the ship as we draw closer to its release. At number 5, we have the roadmap update. As mentioned last week, software development is not a linear process, and that shows this week with a 20% overall jump in progress for 3.2, bringing us to 74% complete with 3 weeks to the final release. Our biggest winners this week include the Aegis Eclipse gaining 71%, Quantum Travel Improvements gaining 60%, and all 3 Avenger variants gaining 50%, taking all of these features to 100% complete. In total, we saw 9 tasks move to 100% this week, bringing the total to 11 completed tasks. This is a very positive sign that we'll see most of the features make their way to 3.2 on time. That said, two features were pushed back this week, Network Bind Culling and FPS Combat AI. Reasoning was given in RTV, and we'll cover it in more detail towards the end of the show, but we won't be seeing these features until Alpha 3.3. The items that currently have the least progress for 3.2 are Performance Optimization at 25% and the Vandal Blade at 34%, though it should be noted that both of these received progress this week, and with more tasks being checked off, we can expect their development pace to increase. As 3.2 runs through the Evocati process, we'll no doubt see items tweaked and changed to fix various bugs, but progress is good this week, and 3.2 looks to be on track to have most of the features specified. Let me know what you guys think of the items dropping to 3.3 in the comments below. 3.3 continues to be developed in the background, sitting at a total of 0% progress this week. That said, there have been some changes and tweaks, with the biggest change arriving on FPS combat weapon use, which gained 14%. Second place goes to the Aegis Hammerhead at 11%, and third is the Rest Stop at 4%. The Constellation Phoenix lost 1%, and Hurston remained the same despite having some tasks added and completed. We should start to see the development of 3.3 pick up in the next couple of weeks, as feature teams complete their 3.2 work and shift to 3.3. Hopefully we see bind culling and object container streaming in 3.3, as these are requisite items for Hurston to be added to the game. That's all for the roadmap this week. Some disappointing losses from the roadmap, but 3.2 is shaping up to release on time, which is always a good thing. At number 4, we have lore content. This week's lore content was a bit of an odd one, with CIG releasing the transcripts for three adverts from the CATV archive naming the post, a word from our sponsors. The ads covered a range of topics and services, though it is a little odd compared to our usual lore content. As usual, I'll link the post in the video description if you guys want to go ahead and check it out. At number 3 we have Around the Verse. ATV this week gave us a look at the new weapon systems we can expect to see in Alpha 3.2, but first we get an update on progress in the verse. Animation and design is being worked on for the boom arm on the Prospector. 
The functionality is good, but there are some design tweaks needed to bring the arm into a more finished state, especially in terms of animation. The mining UI has been tweaked from the previous interfaces we've seen, looking generally more polished overall. The devs have been working to improve resource generation on planets, splitting planets into zones with values such as quantity and density of resource. More scanning UIs are being tested, and it's currently not locked in, despite the Evocati build being released. CRG have not committed to one design, and stated that they won't lock in until all the devs are happy. Combat AI is being tested to draw out any remaining bugs and fix them. The new scramble races are being balanced to ensure fairness between fast ships and heavily armoured ones. The beacons for the scramble races are also being worked on. The Blade and Hurricane are having their landing gear finalised this week, with work being almost complete. Signage is being generated for locations around the verse, such as the rest stops expected in Alpha 3.3. The rest stops continue to be fleshed out, but are looking fairly complete despite missing some assets. Hurston work continues with biome generation getting work. The Savannah, Tundra and Mining Pit biomes have been shown this week, and all three are looking very, very impressive. That's all on PU progress this week, so let's take a look at the new weapon systems making their way into 3.2. The Gemini F55 is a new LMG coming in 3.2. Gemini make flashy, upmarket weaponry generally found with wealthy private military contractors. It's got quite a high rate of fire compared to other LMGs, and has a drum magazine to help deliver all of those rounds. The weapon comes without optic rails, as it's deemed you don't really need them on a weapon of this size. The F-55's drum magazine ejects from the side, adding to the stylish aesthetic, and it is overall larger and more complex than the Demico. The F-55 also benefits from liquid cooling to prevent the weapon from overheating as quickly, and allows you to keep firing it for longer. The F-55 is currently receiving polish related to recoil and power, and it should make its way into the verse for Alpha 3.2. Next up, we have the Klaus & Werner Demico. Klaus & Werner are known for their reliable, if not a bit plain, weaponry. It's designed to be a solid, stable and reliable at the expense of being a bit slower firing. As the Demico is an LMG, it comes complete with larger battery to allow for longer fire times, and a carrying handle. The Demico is designed to be almost an opposite of the F-55, being designed to be a straightforward, simple to use and long range weapon, whereas the F-55 will be harder to master and will be better for short range environments. The preference will really come down to individual choice and I'd love to know what you guys think of each. Leave a comment letting me know which one you're excited to get your hands on. At number 2, we have Reverse Diverse. This week's RTV gave us a look at the upcoming ships for Alpha 3.2, and a special look at the RSI roadmap. Questions were posed on all of the ships planned to release in 3.2, and we'll summarise some of the answers here. To kick off, we found out about the 600i. The 600i has mostly medium-sized components, unlike the Starfarer or Caterpillar, but this is because it doesn't need these components in order to be competitive in the verse. This should become clearer as item 2.0 continues to progress, and you are able to swap out these components. The 3D map seen in some of the concept art will make its way to the ship, but it won't be in the 3.2 release. It'll be the same style as those seen on the capital ships, and will serve roughly the same purpose. The ramp on the new Avenger is slightly wider than the previous one, and is slightly less steep. This might allow slightly more things to fit into it. The Hurricane will have ballistic weapons despite what was shown in ATV. In ATV they were playing around with some of the laser weapons, and you will be able to swap out your weapons for energy weapons if you'd like, but the stock loadout will be ballistic. The Avenger is almost the same component-wise as before the rework, except for the wing hardpoints being switched from size 1 to size 2. The Freelancer component panels are being designed, but they haven't yet been modelled. This is the same for several existing ships that don't have component panels. 
The biggest change to existing ships for 3.2 is the new glass shader, which will make the glass look a lot better and a lot more realistic. At the moment, there are no plans to allow you to swap the Eclipse's missile racks, though this may change in the future. Despite the update of the Avenger, the cargo capacity of it will remain the same as it was on the previous model. There are currently no plans to add any more modules for the 600i, but it has been rigged in such a way that CIG could add more in the future if they want to. Tweaking has been done on most of the ships to allow for some of the basic stealth gameplay with the new scanning system. Scanning isn't fully fleshed out, but ships such as the Eclipse will be less detectable than others. There will be a flight-ready sale with the release of 3.2 to allow citizens to pick up any of the new ships that they don't currently own. We should hear more on this as we draw closer to release. Maneuverability is still being tweaked at this stage, but it should be polished in the weeks leading up to release. The Avenger is slightly less agile due to its new size, but it's still a very impressive ship overall, having previously been a UEE interceptor. The Mustang range were the ones chosen to be pushed back into the next version, as they simply weren't ready before the cutoff date for the 3.2 release. The Avenger had the benefit of being started by the Squadron 42 team earlier in the year, therefore already having made much of the progress needed. You'll enter the Vandal Blade the same way as the Glaive, the seat will descend, you'll climb on, and it'll pull you up into the cockpit. Armour will be a swappable item on ships in the future, allowing you to make the armour on your ship stronger, or better against specific types of assault, such as energy weapons, radar scans, etc. While all ships will be able to scan, ships with dedicated scanners will be much better, having longer ranges and more details as a given distance. They will be more likely to detect things such as stealth ships and so on. The Glaive and Scythe will get a design pass in the future to bring them in line with the new Vandal aesthetic, but there's no timeline for this to happen yet. The Mining Laser will do damage to all ships and players, but it's currently unknown as to whether this will make it into 3.2. It may be that CIG decide to hold off on this feature for the first release and implement later on. The Avenger cells do currently work, but you can currently exit the doors from the inside so they can't be used to hold players. This will be implemented in the future, but CIG don't want people accidentally getting stuck in their own ships. That's all from ships this week but we did get a quick update on the RSI roadmap, as mentioned earlier. First off, Jared told us for the first version of mining in 3.2, mining will only be available on the MISC Prospector, and it will only be on the Moons of Crusader. This means you can't mine asteroids or other ships in the 3.2 release, though these will likely make their way in future patches. Next, we found out FPS Combat AI will be moving back into 3.3 as it's currently not polished or ready enough for the 3.2 release, despite the things that we've seen in ATV. And finally, we had an update on network bind culling. This feature is also being pushed back into 3.3 due to delays patching up 3.1 to a 3.1.4 release. This is disheartening for many players, but it has already gained reasonable progress, and hopefully between bind culling and object container streaming in 3.3, we'll see some major performance improvements towards the end of the year. That's all for RTV this week, and despite some disheartening things dropping into 3.3, 3.2 is shaping up to be quite a fun patch. And finally at number 1, we have the Community Overview. This week has been a very busy one in the Star Citizen community, with the results of both competitions being announced this week. Many of the submissions were fantastic, but the winning posts were really outstanding. The community is very excited to see the 3.2 release make its way to the PU, and many leaks from the 3.2 Evocati build are trickling their way into the community. As we draw closer to a final 3.2 release, we'll likely see many players return to the verse to see what's changed. I've no doubt that at release we'll see a very, very busy period, and I'm excited to see how people play with the new mechanics and what goes on. That's all from me for this week, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video please like it, share it with your friends, follow me on Twitter at Citizen Citadel, and get subscribed if you want to see more content. I value all of your feedback so leave a comment below, I'll be sure to respond to you, 
and I'll see you guys in next week's episode of Week in Review.